Not now, doggo. We're just going to wait to see our attendees come on in. We are also on Facebook Live right now. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome. You have signed in to the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs webinar. We are spotlighting two majors, but for the next half hour, um, we are first going to spotlight our Bachelor of Arts in Computer Science. So welcome um, to those of you who have signed in via Zoom. Uh, we are in webinar format, and so um, you can hear us, but we can't hear you. You are welcome to type in your questions via the Q&A button. Um, if we need to send you anything via the um, via links or emails, we will shoot that out to chat. But um, as far as your questions, we'd love to see your questions via Q&A. For those of you who are joining us on Facebook Live, I will keep an eye on any comments um, that you have or questions via the comment um, section of Facebook. Um, so go ahead and do that. So my name is Vanessa Aya, um, and I am with the UCCS Office of Admissions. I will be joined in a minute um, by Sue McLernan. Um, she is our Career and Industry Out Reach Program Director in our College of Engineering. And before I, I turn things over to her, um, let me give you just a brief description of the university. So UCCS is a part of the all public research University of Colorado system. We are the youngest and the smallest, um, not young by any means over, uh, we were established over 50 years ago um, and not small by any means. We have almost 12,000 students um, this year. We have a wide variety of majors. We divide them into six areas. Um, today, you will learn about two majors in our College of Engineering and Applied Sciences, but certainly they have others. Um, we also have a College of Business, our School of Public Affairs, our College of Education, um, our Helen and Arthur E. Johnson Bethel College of Nursing and Health Sciences, and finally, our College of Letters, Arts and Sciences. If you are undeclared or undecided, totally fine. Um, we have our resources here, um, including the Career Center, our first year experience, our academic advisors who are ready to help you get to decided. We are located one hour south of the capital city of Denver and Colorado Springs is uh, the second largest city after Denver. And so let me go ahead and now turn things over to Sue. And then we'll get you going with our content on the Bachelor of Arts in Computer Science. And let's see. All right, that looks great, Sue. Thanks. Thank you. So I'm here today to talk about the Bachelor of Arts in Computer Science. This is a new degree in our college and we're excited to present it for students to consider. It's part of a family of degrees. So let's just dig on in and get started. Um, this degree was started in fall of 2020. It's a new option, as I just mentioned. The goal for us was to realize that there was a great need in industry for software developers. Um, and many students want to have a degree in that field. They're very interested in, in software development. They're interested in computer science. They're interested in all of the different things that they can accomplish and do in their careers and in the future. Um, but they wanted maybe less theory and a little bit less depth in math and science. And so this is a response to that uh, need in industry and of our students. 
I'm gonna talk about three things today. I'm gonna talk a little bit about our college. I'm gonna talk a little bit about specifics of the degrees, and then we're gonna dig deep into what the degree is uh, consists of and all the different things that you can do with the degree. So first I'll talk about the college right now. So the college has been in existence. It's one of the first colleges that was created for UCCS. It has three main departments. We have computer science, electrical and computer engineering, mechanical and aerospace engineering. We have approximately almost 80 faculty those are teaching and research faculty between all three of the departments. We have three buildings, which I wanted to point out to you. The one on the left there is the engineering and computer science, or uh, engineering building, which houses computer science. It also houses um, math and physics in that same building. The middle building is the Osborne Center for Science and Engineering. That's, that's sort of our 10 year old building. And the one on the right is our UCCS cybersecurity building. It is opening up this fall. And so if you're interested in cybersecurity through this degree, that might interest you that we're moving um, everyone's cybersecurity into a brand new building at some point this fall. By the numbers, here's our college. We have approximately 1,700 students. We have 1,400 undergraduate students, about 300 graduate students, and the graduate students includes masters and PhD students who are doing research. We offer 23 different degrees, and this is how it kind of stacks up in the different departments. About 300 in electrical and computer engineering, about 560 in mechanical and aerospace, 700 are largest in computer science, and the other 120 are cross-discipline degrees that don't quite fit in any of the other three departments. And so we set, we keep them separate when we count them. Here's what computer science looks like in the college. So we have a variety of degrees at a lot of different levels within the college for computer science, but the, this is kind of the basics right here. So the one in gold is the Bachelor of Science. It's, it's a Bachelor of Science in computer, in computer Science. It definitely is theory and development in computer science. Um, the Bachelor of Innovation, there are three of them that hit in the computer science area, and those are the ones that are in gray. We have computer science, game design and development, and computer security. And the Bachelor of Innovation pulls together a core of engineering and computer science with a core of business and innovation. And then what we're talking about today is in the TEAL, that's the Bachelor of Arts in Computer Science. It is an applied degree, and we'll talk a little bit about what that means in the future. We also have two other degrees in the electrical and computer engineering department that kind of crisscross into computer science that might interest you or might not, but we have computer engineering, which is electrical engineering and computer science paired together. And then we have data analytics and systems engineering, which pair together uh, data science and systems engineering. So let's dig into the degree a little bit. So what is this degree? What is a Bachelor of Arts in Computer Science? It's a practical applied degree oriented toward career. It's focused, we have four career tracks that are high industry need. It's flexible because it has lots of electives. It has expanded admission requirements for the, in comparison to the other two degrees that we have. And specific to math and science, because we get asked this a lot, it has fewer math and science courses than a standard Bachelor of Science degree. And the math that you're going to take would be roughly three math courses. You're going to need to come in with either College Algebra or Calculus 1. And then the other math that you're going to do is um, discrete structures, which is logic and computational reasoning, statistical data, um, and then computational line linear algebra. Um, requirements for science are just the campus requirements for science. And I have a graphic that kind of shows that for you on the next slide. But first, let's talk about the built-in track choices. So we have um, faculty and researchers with depth in these areas, and that's why these are the tracks. Um, and these are also needed in industry, in the national industry, regional industry, and where we are, which is in Colorado Springs. So the, the four choices, artificial intelligence and machine learning, getting machines to do work for us and help us to make decisions, cybersecurity, keeping us safe, game development, uh, which is the creation of games, and then computer science, we, I put general there, but really is in computer science general, if you wanted to pick and choose among the other ones and kind of create your own degree, sort of customize it, that's what that one's designed to do. So why would you pick a Bachelor of Arts over a Bachelor of Science or a Bachelor of Innovation? 
here's the difference between the degrees at UCCS. So a Bachelor of Science is that standard in industry. It has ABET accreditation. It has that analytical depth. You would be prepared for industry or graduate school as you would with all of our degrees. Um, the Bachelor of Innovation, again, is that technical core and then that business and innovation core. And we believe at UCCS that we can teach you how to be innovative through innovative processes and team-based experiences. It's very entrepreneurial. Um, most of those courses are ABET or degrees are ABET accredited, but not all. And then the Bachelor of Arts is that applied degree. So you're learning math through statistics, you're focused on software development, and we are responding to industry in the tracks that we're providing. Admission requirements, I'm sure that you'll get all that from Vanessa, but here it is just kind of in a nutshell. We have expanded admission requirements in the BA that vary from the standard admission requirements for the Bachelor of Science and the Bachelor of Innovation degrees. So this is where it gets interesting. I hated to put a graph in this presentation, but I really do think like this kind of shows you what the difference is in a nutshell of this degree. So I'm gonna go through a graph, I'm really sorry, but it's a great graph. So the interesting thing about this graph is that if you look at the first set of bars there where it says degree core and technical electives, you can see that between the Bachelor of Science, the Bachelor of Innovation and that Bachelor of Arts degree, that you are getting almost exactly the same amount of technical knowledge, technical depth in your area of computer science and that's really important to know that you're getting what you need to be successful out in the career area that you choose to go into. The second set of bars there shows you that in the innovation and cross-discipline curriculum that that only exists in that Bachelor of Innovation degree. It's really not in the other degrees. So if that's very important to you, that is the degree that you want to do. And then here, the next three sets of bars, this is where the difference is for the Bachelor of Arts. The first one is math. You can see that that Bachelor of Science has that classic amount of math, and then the two others have lower amounts of math. So that's that applied part of the, the degree that I talked about. Um, in terms of science, um, Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Innovation have that um, higher amount of science requirements. And this looks like there's no science, but there actually is a little bit of science in the degree. It would be what the campus requires students to have for science. And then this is the big bonus in this degree as well, the general electives. Wow, look how many there are in this degree. So that allows a lot of customizing for students. So if you're coming from community college, if you wanna do a minor in another college or you wanna do a, a minor here, in our college, you have the opportunity to do that. If you have credits you're transferring in, those transfer in as well, depending on what you have. Um, it's allowed to have those transferred in. And then if you wanted to take extra courses though, if you had an, an area, let's say that you decided to focus on one area within this degree and you wanted to take additional classes in another area, you could use these general electives to do that. Um, you could also use it to focus in on on something that needed an extra requirement that you needed to do, so you could do that as well. So very, very flexible. Here's the areas of coursework that you're gonna be working on with the credits kind of on them. So computer science and the tracks, you're gonna pick one of those four tracks, and then you're gonna have the basic uh, composition and cur uh, compass curriculum up on the top, and then there's the math and the general electives down on the bottom. So the, these are the core components of your degree. Again, our goal with the Bachelor of Arts in Computer Science is to give you what you need to be successful in industry, and that's those technical electives plus the tracks, Plus we've eliminated things that are not as important in this degree because we want you focused on your career moving forward. In terms of minors within our college, these are the common minors that students can take. Of course, if you're in game design or cybersecurity or something like that, you wouldn't be allowed to take those as your minor, uh, game programming, game design, things like that. Other common, um, minors for our students in particular tend to be math and physics, just because for our traditional students in like the Bachelor of Science, they're already taking a lot of math and physics, but you can certainly take anything university-wide that fits as long as it fits within your plan, you're welcome to take that and add that into your degree. So let's dig a lot deeper into this, this program. So 
each of the tracks has a completely different focus, but all within the umbrella of computer science. So the artificial intelligence and machine learning um, has these components in it. So artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, getting the most amount of data out of big data sets. So think artificial intelligence is us trying to teach the computer to learn and improve its own accuracy, helping the computer to find patterns using data models, trying to get the computer to learn from its own experience and perform human-like tasks. So that would be the main thing. So some of the courses you might take here would be statistical data analysis, um, robotics, artificial intelligence, um, evolutionary algorithms, artificial neural network, which would be like a series of algorithms that tries to determine like relationships in the data and sort of mimics the way that a human brain thinks. Um, and then natural language processing, you might do that. So that is, we are so used to communicating verbally and written, but can we teach a computer to do the same thing um, on our behalf or understand what we've already done? And that's a big challenge. We have um, faculty that do research in that area and we have a lab in that area as well. And then obviously all this is underpinned by the idea of big data big data sets, huge amounts of data that the human person cannot possibly process all at once and find connections, but computers can. And through regression and various other types of analysis, it can find those components that we can't see and bring those forward for some type of decision-making or next steps. The second track is cybersecurity. So this is another area where UCCS has great depth. Uh, we have uh, UCCS cybersecurity as an umbrella organization for UCCS that encompasses other colleges um, for the College of Engineering and Applied Science. We are the technical depth in cybersecurity. So we are um, trying to determine what software-based threat detection looks like. Uh, we are providing technology-based solutions out, uh, well, for our students and then out in the workforce when you get into your career. And the goal is to protect computers, networks, and data from attack. And for UCCS, we're a Department of Homeland Security, National Security Agency, um, Center of Ex Academic Excellence in Cyber Defense Education. That means that the government um, from its highest level has looked at our curriculum and our program and decided that it is rigorous enough to meet the needs um, of future computing professionals in cybersecurity. And that's something that we take pride in. We've had that designation for many, many years and we just renewed it. So that's really important to think about from when you think about where you're gonna go to school. Um, Colorado Springs in itself is a hub for cybersecurity and cybersecurity startups and also for the defense industry. So housed in that new building, that brand new building that's gonna open in the fall is the National Cybersecurity Center, uh, which is a policy making entity that we partner with all the time. It's, it's actually in our building. And then Exponential Impact is a startup incubator also located inside that building. And then we'll have various other partners entering the building and sharing space with us. And that gives our students opportunities for internships and connections to companies and entities that they might not have had the opportunity to experience elsewhere. Some of the things that you might learn about are on the screen right there, but I also wanted to add that some of the courses would include you know, cryptography, privacy and censorship, ethical hacking, which is important, homeland security and anonymous networks. And then game development, teaches, and I apologize that that's cut off a little bit there for you. Um, game development, you're going to learn about game design and game theory. So game theory has a lot to do with um, how the user perceives what's happening, but also it, there's a, another version of that, which is when you're designing a game, like what does that look like on your end? Are you teaching, teaching the user to play the game as they're going along? Are you guiding them? Are you giving hints? Like how does the game actually provide what the user needs as they go through it. So there's a lot to game 
theory. We use specialized software in this particular area, like uh, Maya, Unity Game Engine, things like that. We also program in C, C Sharp, things like that, so that you're prepared. Um, we also think about the user experience. So there's like UI UX type uh, information in this course. Um, we also do computational thinking so that you can think, how do I work with all of that different assets that I'm creating in a game? There's, there's music, there's graphics, the files are huge. I need things to load. I need the user to have an experience and what type of a system are they on? And, and all of those things come together into this type of a degree. Um, we're also doing object-oriented design, which is when you click on one particular thing, it actually does what you need it to do. Um, a few other things, there's a few choices of other areas that you can take in this, but game art is also a thing so that you have that professional look. We've had students focus on um, game music on their own, so it kind of depends on what that looks like for you. And then one of the interesting things I think that's in this degree is that there is a little bit of thought in terms of designing for user diversity, and that can be diversity of all types of players, people, races, ethnicities. And then there's another course that you can take in developing serious games as well. And I will say that for employment, the students in this degree can definitely work in the game industry, but with the gamification of so many things on the internet that you could work in a lot of different industries. So you could work uh, for like a military contractor, which would be like the gamification of practicing to fly a jet, or you could do something in education, or you could do something in training and teaching. So there's a lot of places that the skills that you're learning in this degree can go in terms of a career. Um, the general uh, computer science one, I just wanted to put sort of the basics of computer science on this one. Although the goal of this track is that you do the general computer science ones and then you pick and choose from the other tracks to customize the degree for yourself. Um, so obviously you're gonna learn about all of these basics, programming, software engineering, artificial intelligence, a little bit of machine learning, but the basics of compilers, algorithms, computer architecture and computability, which is how things can be computed, I guess, for lack of a better word, but how can you get a solution into a computer would be the better response to that. Um, opportunities for students. I like this, um, this particular slide, but we have clubs. We are very career focused at UCCS. Our students um, really like opportunities that they get. So my office is the career office in the college and I'm there to help students get internships and engage with industry and develop their skills in through other experiences our faculty, our research faculty in this, these areas. And then we have the infrastructure. Again, we have learning labs, research labs, new buildings, new equipment. And then obviously we have the ability to let our students uh, use and check out and use additional software that might not be available in their program so that they can pursue their education specifically. So we have an entire library of software that you might be interested in, in using that could be helpful in your the pursuit of your personal degree. Um, this is just a list of some of our labs. Just thought I'd put that down. And I wanted to say, I just want I have two slides left. And this one is why would you consider UCCS engineering and applied science? Um, the reason is that we have an undergraduate focus and we have academic rigor. We are providing regionally relevant majors geared toward employment. We have high workforce demand in the degrees that we offer and we're the right size. We're not too big and we're not too small, although we are still growing. We also want you to have student success. So we want you to have to know what's here and available for you. So the career office is me uh, and I'm providing success, success components to help you get those internships and experiences before you graduate. Um, the university has scholarships and assistance in, in those type of things. We feel that we have quality students, but we also feel that we have quality faculty and staff and we're here for you, we're here to help. And the other reason is that we have Excel centers in every department. So there is a computer science help center. There's one for all of our different departments, but then we feel so strongly that a lot of students feel more comfortable with math when they have a lot of support that the math center for assistance is located right in the engineering building. So we want you to be successful. Questions? 
All right, thanks, Sue. Yeah, students, if you have any questions, like I said, go ahead and pop that in the Q&A. We did have um, some come in, Sue. One in particular is um, high school preparation. So for students who are maybe juniors, um, right now they're, you know, they might have already registered for their senior classes next year. Um, but what kinds of high school prep have you noticed have been very helpful for students to have to be successful once they are at UCCS? So in the College of Engineering and Applied Science, this is the Bachelor of Arts, which has more expanded admissions requirements. So if you're thinking that you're preparing for college and you're doing those basic career or um, basic college prep courses, you're probably gonna be okay. Again, the math requirements for this particular degree are, are not the same as the ones for the Bachelor of Science degree. So I feel like sometimes that's, that's um, a concern for a lot of high school students that they're not taking those higher, higher level math courses. So if you're, if you're on the math course for course uh, for college, you should be okay for that. The other thing that I think is really helpful for students interested in like a technical degree, just overall, is being curious and interested and open to learning new things that are technically based. So that is, it isn't something that, that you're fearful of. So it's being open, open and really feeling like you have an idea that you want to go into computer science or software or cyber, and you have that desire to go and learn and do something more in the industry where you are. So it's, it's almost like an uninterested student is probably the hardest student for us to help. So we like students that are still learning, are on a college track, and are open and maybe dedicated to what they're doing, I guess, if that makes sense, Vanessa and students. Yeah, that does make sense. The other related question that we get in our admissions office is what about programming experience? Are You mentioned some of the programs that um, the program uses. Um, what are, is there anything they should have beforehand knowledge of, or do you think that that could be something that could be taught once they so, got here? So we don't assume that you have any programming experience at all when you come. If you have some, that's great, but it's definitely not required. And in my role uh, helping students with career, um, I work all the time with companies and industry that are looking to create those pipelines into industry. And they're looking for sometimes freshmen and sophomore students instead of juniors for internships, like you would think. So even our industry partners are aware that students who are freshmen and sophomores might not have that great depth yet in computing. And so we assume that you don't know, we'll teach you everything you do know, but everything that you know that you've gotten previous will just help you. It'll help make a course easier or it'll help make concepts a little bit uh, easier for you. Or sometimes it'll make a connection where you didn't have a connection before, where sometimes you learn something and you're going step by step by step, just trying to get through, okay, make it do this, make it do that, make it do the next thing. And what our courses do is try to bring all of those concepts together so that you understand a little bit of the theory as to what you're doing and then why you're doing it and then how it connects to everything else. So I would say you're working on things that are more complex, but we're going to give you the tools to do that. Awesome information. And then one last question before we switch over to what we call DAISY, um, Data Analytics and Systems Engineering. Um, I just to reassure parents that are out there with our game design program, um, and I heard you say it, they're not just playing games and it's not towards just things like Minecraft or... <laughs> oh, it's, it's actually not that at all. Is there a question with that one or do you want me to just talk? Yes, if you could just let parents know they it's it's like you said, other industries um, that game design applies to. So yeah, there isn't a, a, a gigantic game industry. I mean, well, there is in terms of like the economic size of the gaming industry, but many students do their own startups or because it's part of the, the BI, pro well, can be part of the BI program as well. So they wanna do that. But gaming is everywhere. So, are we still there? 
Yes, you're still okay, there. I just switched you. over screens. No, yep. Thank you. So gaming is applied in every industry. So anytime that we need a learning simulation for someone, that is basically a game. So if we, if you are in training or a company does training, they want it to be engaging for the student or the person who's taking that training. So in all industries, there is training, there is simulation, or one of our biggest um, areas of employment in Colorado Springs is the defense industry. So if you think aerospace and you think um, you know, missile defense or something, we wanna make sure that, that everyone is trained appropriately in what they're doing before they need to do those activities in real life. And on the internet in general, there's the gamification of everything. So we're badging people for skills. We're using you know, LinkedIn learning and those type of things. And those are all, gamified resources where we're taking very serious things that people need to learn and we're putting it in the framework of a game. And so the, the opportunities for students to gain employment outside of the gaming industry are quite high. Awesome. Thank you, Sue. So um, for those of you who are still interested, we'd love for you to stay on now and learn, another, learn about another one of our uh, College of Engineering and Applied Science programs, the Bachelor of Science in Data Analytics and Systems Engineering. And so before I uh, turn it back over to Sue uh, with that information, for those of you you who are just joining us, welcome. My name is Vanessa Aya, and I am with the UCCS Office of Admissions. Um, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the university. So for those of you who were with us at the top of the half hour, um, I am going to have some repeat information. Um, so anyway, the UC, uh, UCCS, University of Colorado, Colorado Springs campus, we are a part of the all public research University of Colorado system. Um, you see this beautiful snowy picture of our campus. Um, it's actually a, a gorgeous day in Colorado Springs, um, hitting the 60s. And so, you know, even in our winter spring semester time, it does not stay like this all the time. Um, we're located one hour south of the capital city of Denver. Um, and our students who are coming from out of the area, they can either fly in to see us um, from the Denver airport, which is an hour 15 minutes away, or through the Colorado Springs airport, which is 20 minutes away. We have six different areas that students can choose to major in. Today or next, you'll learn about one program that's in our College of Engineering and Applied Science the data analytics and systems engineering program, but know that we have five other areas. We have a college of business. We have our uh, school of public affairs. We have our college of education. We have our Helen and Arthur E. Johnson, Bethel College of Nursing and Health Sciences. And finally, our college of letters, arts and sciences. Other fun facts is that we are a we are an NCAA Division II um, campus, and we compete in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. And so, with that, let me go ahead and stop sharing, and then we'll have Sue come back on. Um, she is with our College of Engineering, and she's our Career and um, Industry Outreach Program Director with some very good information now about data analytics and systems engineering. All right, Sue, so let me get you back on screen. Sorry, there we I think go. I'm back. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you're you. good. Uh, so this is a, a newer degree in our in our college. It's data analytics and systems engineering. I will refer to it as DAISY because that's quite a mouthful. Um, this degree was created to combine two very different things that are actually quite related. So this is a completely different degree than that one that we just did, Bachelor of Arts in Computer Science. Uh, this is a traditional Bachelor of Science degree. This is a degree in uh, this degree combines two sections, and this is definitely a very 
a relevant area for employment. So I, I just want to say that up front, this, this degree is geared toward employment as well, but in, in a different way and in different industries. So if you were on, I apologize uh, for repeating information if you've already heard this, but I'm going to talk a little bit about the college and I'm going to talk a little bit more about the degree and then we're going to do a deep dive into this degree. And there's a lot to this degree. So I want to definitely get to questions at the end. So I'm going to go a little bit quicker through the beginning section so that we have time for lots of questions. So so about the college, um, this we have three current buildings and we're about to have, uh, well, three and a half buildings. So we have three departments, computer science, electrical and computer engineering, then mechanical and aerospace engineering. The main building is there on the left. That's the engineering building. Uh, it will be, it will have an add-on to that building in the next couple of years. The center building is the Osborne Center for Science and Engineering. That's where mechanical and aerospace students spend most of their time. Uh, and then the third building there that you see is going to open up this fall. The building exists, but we're rehabbing the entire, um, the entire inside of a former uh, manufacturing facility to be our new cybersecurity building. Uh, so we have a lot going on, a lot of capital projects. We have um, almost 80 faculty in teaching and research between all three of those departments. By the numbers, here's where we sit. This particular degree sits in the electrical and computer engineering department, which is the one on the left with approximately 320 students. It's our smallest department, um, but they are small and mighty and our students um, are in high demand from that department. Uh, the next uh, largest one is mechanical and aerospace engineering with 560, computer science with 700 and the college with 120 are those cross-disciplinary degrees, like we have a Bachelor of Science in Engineering Education that sort of doesn't quite fit. And so that's where those students reside. We have 23 different degrees, um, undergraduate through PhD, and our PhD students are all researchers. Um, these are the degrees in this department. So we're talking about the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department. Um, the, the two in gold there are the traditional ones. That would be our electrical engineering and computer engineering. So electrical engineering is electrical devices and um, analysis design and use. And then computer engineering is putting that together with hardware and software. So it would be like the internet of things if that's helpful for you. And then the um, bachelor of science, the one that's in the teal is the one that we're talking about today in data analytics and systems engineering. So this is taking two things analyzing complex data and designing and integrating complex systems. So what is this degree? So there's a lot of big words that we're going to say in this degree, but this is a really awesome degree. Uh, so this is the two complex fields coming together. So data analytics, big data, and systems engineering, integration engineers. They bring, they pull together lots of different systems. That's the best description I have for them. It's focused on complex systems, and there are three tracks. Um, there is a description there, which is a little fussy, <laughs> of, of each of the sides of this degree. So data analytics describes how to analyze complex data to reach actionable conclusions and systems engineering describes how engineers conceive design integrate and test complex systems so what does that mean so let's talk about that so data analytics is that big data it's analysis of huge data systems so i'm just going to have you imagine for a second the mars rover how much data the mars rover is handling at any one moments in time. So it's handling its own navigation, self-checks, weather, surface conditions, whether it should check something out, uh, communication, safety, and that's all analyzing huge amounts of data at any one time. And then systems engineering, you can also think of the Mars ro rover, but I thought of a different um, example to that, which would be the engineering challenge of a cockpit of a jet airplane. So there are physical systems, computer software, data, wire sensors, humor, human interaction, and then decision making all going on all at the same time. Um, and it needs, it all needs to work together because it's all important and you can't ignore any one of those pieces of what we would consider a system. Uh, the three tracks are built for industry demand. So obviously data analytics, data science is that big emerging area of need. If you think um, 
you know, maybe like Google or, or Amazon, huge amounts of data happening all the time. So data analytics is becoming big and getting bigger every single day. Systems engineering is the other part, but if you wanted to, you could also focus a degree on both and do a half and half degree. So if you want both those sides to come together, you can certainly do that. Otherwise you can focus on one of these tracks. Um, these tracks were determined where our faculty and researchers have depth. I wanted to talk about the two faculty for this degree really quickly. So we have Dr. Adam Atiabi. He specializes in machine learning, analytics, and data modeling. He does research in machine learning and artificial intelligence um, with in the human behavior field, specifically with social robots. Um, and then um, Bill Michael is just finishing up his PhD and he comes from a military background in the defense industry where he was a systems engineer. He also runs our senior design um, capstone experience. This degree has one of those associated with it. So when students are a senior, they're gonna do work on a real world problem in a group as a group of engineers uh, working on a real world problem with from industry sponsors uh, to complete their education technically, yes, but also in working professionally with others. Again, the difference between the degree, we're talking about a Bachelor of Science degree right now, it's gonna have that depth, that analytical depth in design and analysis. It's gonna prepare you for industry or graduate school. It is ABET accredited. ABET accreditation are degrees that meet national standards in engineering and computer science. And those standards, even though there's an accreditation agency or in, um, entity, um, the standards are actually set by industry. Um, and then you can compare that to the other two degree types that are right there. Um, if you're interested in the innovation degree, uh, we do believe at UCCS that the innovation process can be taught and it isn't something that only a few people understand and students are capable of incorporating that into their careers. Um, again, standard admission requirements for the College of Engineering and Applied Science apply to this one here. So it would be definitely doing math, doing science, um, and preparing for admission into an engineering college. Um, I think Vanessa can speak to that a little bit more, but I just wanted to put the slide up. Again, a comparison, and in this case, I want you to focus on the gold bars. So this is a standard Bachelor of Science. So it's got that technical depth and that analytical depth that students are gonna need in their future careers. So um, high degree of core and technical electives, um, no innovation, because that's not what this degree is focused on, um, high levels of math and science, um, and low number of general electives. And the reason for that is that we're putting a lot into this degree for you already. And so the number of electives, there's still electives there, but it's just lower than in some of the other degrees because you need to have certain uh, prerequisites to do some of your coursework. And we, we take that into account. Here are the areas for DAISY. Uh, so if you look between the technical electives here, um, oh, let me go over here, here, apologize, and the tracks here and the math and science, you can see that, that there is a lot of, of um, hours spent in all of those technical areas. Um, you'll do mathematics through calculus three. You'll do computational linear algebra with differential equations and probability and statistics. I don't want anybody to get frightened about that. I just, that's what you're gonna be doing. Um, you'll be doing a programming sequence. You'll be doing coursework. This is kind of interesting in mechanical engineering, computer science and electrical engineering because that systems engineering part of the, of the degree requires that you know a lot about a lot of different things. Um, and then there's a specialized core um, in analysis and, and systems engineering. Uh, you can do different minors in the college. Um, if you can fit it into your program, you can certainly do one. These are the common minors in our uh, college that our students do, but also a very, very common minor for our students is math or physics because you're already doing a lot of math and physics as part of your degree already. So here are the tracks, there's three. So data analytics is, you're gonna have 18 hours of your degree focused just on data analytics. So this is gonna be the things that are listed right there. And I wanted to describe a little bit the machine learning and machine mining. So machine learning is 
how do we teach, it's part of um, artificial intelligence, but how do we teach the computer to learn and to analyze and to get better? How does it find things uh, like deep learning that we can't see as humans because we don't have enough data or we don't have access, uh, the capacity to look at that much data and actually make a meaningful result with it? So this is what we utilize computers for. Um, data visualization is how we look at that data. And sometimes, very interestingly enough, the computers can help us visualize data in ways that we never even thought were possible. So data visualization is a really great part of this degree. Data mining is going deep, very, very deep. An example would be like medical data. Uh, a doctor might see lots and lots of patients, but not notice a trend between a certain medication and a certain disease and a certain type of patient. But um, through deep, deep analysis, um, that connection could be found. And so uh, through this degree, you'll learn this part of the degree, you'll learn how, what and how things are found that might be interesting, things that are different, things that are interesting from an analysis perspective that can lead to better outcomes in whatever field that you're working in. And this could even apply like at Disney World, if you think about how everybody stands in a line, there's a lot of things that you could learn from how people stand in lines. Um, Systems engineering, if you want to do this track, you'll focus on 18 credit hours just on systems engineering, which would be systems engineering, which is lots of different elements coming together. So in a, in a system, when we're thinking about engineering, we have physical systems, we have computing systems, we have human people coming into that as well. We have, and we need to look at how can we do, how can we get all these things to work together, test them and improve them by making all of the systems work together. Um, if you do, I, I put the little social robot here because we use social robots for students to learn how to make a system, especially in systems engineering, all work together. This is a, a social robot that works. Uh, it's programmed to move, interpret behavior and interact with people. It uses um, machine learning to do that. It uses artificial intelligence to interpret what's going on and it interacts with humans. So that's a great way for our students to learn. But if you chose to do the track that's both sides, you're gonna select nine credit hours from both tracks. So you gain knowledge in both sides of this degree equally if that's your choice. So who might like this degree? Do you like to solve problems? Do you like math? Do you think you'd like working in a variety of environments? This degree is applicable everywhere. All industries, manufacturing, um, supply chain, uh, just about anywhere like Disney, the entertainment industry, uh, in addition to like defense and classic computing um, type organizations, it's everywhere. And do you think you'd like developing a system to improve maybe quality, productivity, human interactions, patient quality? There's a lot of improvement in this because when you're talking about a system engineer, remember that's that integration engineer, things have to work together. And that's what these type of um, engineers do. So career options, I put a lot of different on this slide because you're not going to find any one name of any one particular job title in this field. So it's sort of because every industry is different. So you might hear data scientists, intelligence analysts, data engineers, systems engineers, integrations, operations, test quality, all of the different types of engineers. But I just wanted to put that up because sometimes there's such a variety of job titles that um, students get confused as to what they would look like for their um, internships. And this is one of the things I work with students on all the time. And then I wanted to just show you some sample systems. Here are some very complex systems. So we've got some very detailed manufacturing. We've got some people working on complex systems as humans. We have satellites and a cockpit, and then we've got some sustainability solar panels there. All of these are samples of like what a complex system might be. So they can be small or large, but the idea is that they are complex. Opportunities for students are the same. So we have professional clubs and organizations, competitive clubs. Um, career focus for this one is definitely out into industry. Um, and there are also a lot of folks who are interested in this degree from the civilian employment perspective and in the defense industry because there's just a great need um, for systems engineers. 
And then also I wanted to say that uh, we host students on whatever software they need to use to accomplish their goals, whether it's in their um, senior design projects or on their own or for class. We support our students in all the different ways. We have labs that support students. Uh, we have senior design labs uh, for every single department. Uh, and we want to make sure that students feel like they're supported and they have all of the things that they need to complete their degrees successfully. And then again, why UCCS and Applied Science? We are undergraduate focused. We have academic rigor that's important. This degree is ABET accredited. We are providing regionally relevant majors with high workforce demand and we're not too big and we're not too small at UCCS. Um, we have Excel centers for every department and math is housed in the College of Engineering because we think it's important. Uh, we feel that we attract and retain quality students, which helps other students learn from each other. But we also feel that we have quality faculty and staff who are all geared to helping uh, students be successful. We have an in-college uh, in career office, which is me helping students um, connect to industry. That's the other half of my job is connecting to industry. So our students have opportunities for internships and, and post-graduate employment. Um, and then obviously we want our students to be able to afford to come to UCCS. So we have scholarships and funding and I know that's part of what Vanessa does as well. Questions? All right, so students, if you have any questions, please go ahead and continue to put them in the Q&A button. Um, but we did have a couple of questions come in, Sue. So I know that earlier or last week, there was the virtual career fair, right? Yep. That you all hosted. Can you share a little bit about um, how that went uh, for y'all and maybe some of the organizations that took part? I can. So we have lots of different organizations that um, recruit at UCCS. They don't all attend the STEM career for. So our typical companies would be Sierra Nevada, Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin in the aerospace and defense industries. Uh, we have smaller companies that would be like um, Black Forest Engineering. We had Maxim Integrated. So we have lots of different companies that totally hit a lot of different areas for us. So they could be hitting like traditional electric engineering design type components. They can be big, they can be medium, they can be small, they can focus on many things, they can be focused on a few things. So we had hundreds of students attend the career fair last week. We really pushed out to our students. It was virtual because of COVID. We are not allowed to have an in-person career fair yet, but traditionally our career fairs are in person. Uh, when they're virtual, we share them with our other partner campuses so that uh, students, if we don't have an employer that's currently at our career fair, they can hit one of the other campus career fairs and vice versa. So we want all of our students at the University of Colorado to be successful and have those opportunities. And some of our companies do a lot of different things for employment. So as part of my office, I provide engagement opportunities for companies. So I have companies come in and they want to be a speaker or they want to review resumes for students, or they may want to be a connected to be an advisor for a club. So we try to provide a lot of opportunities for our companies to come in and engage with students outside of class um, and just sort of explore. So we have information sessions that are in person and online all the time. So students can learn what's out there and what they need to do to connect with this company or entity or agency or whatever it is. Um, and then also every year, uh, we have Engineering Week, which is basically Career Exploration Week. It's always in February, and that is an entire week of, and it's not, it's not even a career fair. It's just we bring in tons of companies to just educate our students, and students get to connect with those companies and explore what they might want to do. So the goal that I have for our students is that they've had enough opportunity to explore, and they've had enough exposure to companies and industries that they feel good when they're ready to look for that internship or that postgraduate um, employment opportunity that they're ready for that or that they know where they want to go or that they just want to try it out and maybe the next internship they'll try something different. Awesome information and then related to internship how early can they start looking or how early do organizations come looking for them sophomore year junior year. 
you would think. So, so traditionally it would be junior year. That's the traditional big area. And every degree is a little bit different. So for students in computer science who have had a lot of experience in high school, sometimes they're able to capture those internship um, you know, internship as freshman opportunities. Uh, we have found that there is great interest and need in the STEM industries as a whole for technically minded students so that their companies are coming earlier um, in students' academic careers to try to make that connection. And they might have them working on less detailed projects through that internship, but they want to make that connection to the student. So they're creating like a pipeline between students and their companies so that by the time a student graduates, they might have had one, two, maybe even three internships and they're ready for employment with that particular company. But if you're on the company's side of the house, uh, a company gains an already trained person um, if they have an, an intern that transitions to a full-time employee. So it's a win-win on behalf of the company to have interns transitioning into employees. And then uh, another related question is, are those internships like full-time during the summer or do these internships occur um, during the, you know, the students' classes of, of fall and spring semester? So it kind of depends. I would say most internships are full-time in the summer, but full-time means somewhere between eight and 16 weeks in the summer, depending on what the student can do. But we do have quite a few companies that prefer to keep a student on through the school year. Most of our internships are paid in, um, in our college. And so um, they want to keep the student engaged with their company so that they'll come back the next year. And so they will uh, continue to have the student work on a much reduced set of hours, somewhere between like eight is the lowest I've heard of and 20 is the most anything over 20 for an engineering student and I don't recommend that because that means you're probably not as focused on your studies as you should be um, but then again we do have um, some more mature students who have already had a career and are coming back to get their degree and they do tend to work you know part-time full-time as they're completing their degree as well Awesome. And so you mentioned, because that was a question, I'm wondering if it was a parent, I would ask this because I'm a parent, um, is you mentioned that most of the internships are paid. Um, and then in terms of careers for after, um, you know, I, I don't certainly expect you to have numbers, but do you feel that our students are being well compensated um, for whatever full time job opportunities they are potentially going into? They are well compensated. And I do think that the one thing I find that's interesting that is always interesting to students is that um, the defense industry starts students off a little bit lower than they would like to think sometimes. And it's because they're, the, the compensation is based on contracts, right? There, there's a contract for that. But overall, I would say, it, well, and the trade-off for that is that the student's getting a clearance that they can like take anywhere and get, gain great experience. So the start off is a little bit slower in the defense industry. But other than that, yes, they're being compensated, compensated well. The average I would say the average intern earns somewhere between 15 and $30 an hour as an intern in engineering. Of course, that's commensurate with experience. We do have some on the lower end, which would be like around 12. And for our master's and PhD students, we have them up to like $50 an hour. It just depends on what they're doing and what their experience is and the company for sure. But definitely compensated very well in terms of being an intern, like that's, you know, definitely better than some of the other positions that students can get. Separately, though, I wanted to mention that within the college, we also hire students. We hire students um, in the college to be uh, graders, uh, research assistant, teaching assistants, and to work with someone who's doing research as well. So there's undergraduate research opportunities for students as well. Those are uh, paid as well. Awesome. And then the final question before we end our session is um, related to clubs. Our engineering students do have fun and do have a student life, despite what people might think. So could you share again some of the different um, student organizations within the College of Engineering? I can. So we have our basic 
clubs, like anyone can start a club for anything that you would like to. So if there's something you don't see, you can definitely do that. We have competition clubs. So we have a Hyperloop team that's competing in the SpaceX competition. We have students who are in SAE formula and they're competing to build like a car, a sustainable car and, and actually drive and run the car. They also build it. They're in the battery division because we like sustainability at UCCS. We have IEEE. We have professional like uh, National Society of Black Engineers, Society of Women Engineers, um, National Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers. I think I said that backwards, but uh, so we have different clubs and organizations that are positive. So whether you're coming to an event that I'm hosting with uh, a company that's here on campus that wants to visit with students or you're part of a club, yes, you, you have fun. Engineering students laugh and they have fun and they relax. And it's, it's not all just, you know, nose to the grindstone. But what we try to do with all those experiences is give you the option to explore your career with like-minded individuals so that you get a really good feel for what you wanna do. Because if you get in and you never explore your, your intended career and then you graduate and don't like your first job, I think that maybe there's a disconnect there. So we wanna make sure that you have plenty of opportunity to talk to employers and engineers and, and people who can help guide you uh, toward some goal that you have. So our goal is not to push you, our goal is to help you. Great way to end, Sue. So thank you students and parents for joining us to learn a little bit more about UCCS and our College of Engineering. If you have any other questions, please reach out. Thanks and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Bye-bye.